So my piece is called Evidence of Memory Meditations on Re Remembering. Um, and I wanted to try and find a way to materialize the feeling you have when you revisit a memory or can't really recall a memory or you know that that distance you sometimes feel with accessing your memories. So I was interested in the way that photography relates to that and how when you're taking a picture you are trying to almost capture in a hard copy a memory that you think is valid in, in some way. And I suppose one of the interesting ways you do that is with the Polaroid. So then I started playing with the Polaroid and removing the image on the emulsion from the Polaroid in, in a sense like capturing, taking, taking the image and making it yours as a sense rather than just leaving it in, in the uh, form that it comes out of the camera. So then I obviously stuck it on the glass, um, but manipulated the Polaroid so the amount of image that you can see <coughs> changes depending on the, the light that you're looking at the piece in. Kind of like a memory, so you, you often look at memories in different ways depending on your mood or you know, other experiences that you've had and, and things like this. And then I was also interested in the layering of your memories. So you only really remember the last time you remembered something, you know, and how true, if, if you relate that then back to evidence, how much can you believe your own memories from your childhood or from stories you're told or, you know, the information is almost too much and too vague and too distant to be sure of, of what that actual original truth was that you tried to capture in your mind, you know, with, and, and, and I guess the, the purpose of this is just to try and give you that feeling of not really being able to, to, to hold on to that. But, but here you can hold on to it and think about it. So then I read, um, there's a book called um, Photographs Not Taken, which is like a collection of essays by photographers on <clears throat> pictures that they didn't decide to take. But all of those commentaries are memories that they're recording about choosing not to take a picture. So there's, there was one by David Mycel and another one by Kalen Davini or something that I, I, that I liked. And one of, one of them is he's talking about, he goes through the different times in his life from when he was young to when he was a grown up man, you know, like three years old, four years old, six years old, teenager, young adult, 35 with kids, of all the different times he didn't take a picture. So then I started thinking about, you know, how you change as a person and how that affects your memories. And then I read, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, I don't know if it's an essay or there's a, like an ex, extract from Marcel Proust, who's a French philosopher, I think. Writer. Writer. Um, and he talks about the way that you can have the feeling of knowing you remember something, but not knowing what that memory is, and having to like look inside yourself to find that memory, and if you read the text, it, a lot of it I thought related back to my project, and he talks about, um, the, at the beginning he says, the Celts believed that when someone died, their soul would <coughs> enter into inanimate objects or plants or animals or material things, that would then, their soul would then sit in that thing, like a tree or a plant or, I don't know, a bird or something, and it wasn't until you could hear their voice of that soul talking to them and you recognise it that then their soul is released again through you sort of becoming aware of their existence once again through this object. So I used that to sort of take some of the images I took were related to, you know, more inanimate things or more abstract type stuff. And then I put it in the box as obviously this is sort of like your mind and you're not sure necessarily always what's in it, I suppose. And then when you go in, all of the memories are in these envelopes. And then I took, I took text in no real specific order um, that I felt related to memory from Marcel Proust. And then I put them on each envelope just to make the viewer meditate on what a memory is or what the feeling of a memory is. Basically. Okay.
Um, and I think a lot of the text worked actually really quite well. You can have a look at that. But it's fine. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to have a look at it. Yeah, I stuck with it because you have to access the object. Do you have to rip it out? So if anyone wants to have a look, I don't know. We have enough glass blocks. You know, so like each each text, they don't have to be read in an order. But you know, it's just to sort of make you think about that feeling of trying to trying to remember. You know? So they're a combination, like there's plants, trees, and then I did pictures of myself. So like of your memories, they have your memories. So they have like your memories. Yeah, some, like, some are like from memories I had, some are sort of abstract meditation. You don't see it. And then others are from myself as a child. Either some that I remember or some that I wasn't sure about, that I was going to picture, and some from stories. Me really and my area where I grew up, and I went back and retook. With the, I held the picture in place, and then retook it with the polar away from it, and then did that. Basically. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. It's amazing, right? It's beautiful. Well, you hung up the light, just the texture. Contemporary photo So some, some, because I, I think like there's some of you know pictures of people, like for example my ex-girlfriend, and at one time she was like the only thing I could think about, you know, like all the time, and then now. So, you know, you might go months and months without thinking about them, you know? And I think that's quite interesting how your memory chooses what's at the forefront of your mind and what's not. And through manipulating the Polaroids, you can dictate to a certain degree how much can be seen. Like initially, some you have to really, really look for, and others depending on the light and, and that sort of stuff. So. Is that according to how long you let it to develop or something? No, like when you when you peel apart the, the Polaroids, there's like a there's like a film on the back, like a powder, and you, with a paintbrush you can take that away. And the more you take away, the more transparent the more transparent it becomes, and the more transparent it becomes, the harder it is to access the actual image, the truth, as it were, of that memory. Yeah. Such yeah. an interesting idea, multi-layered. That's a play value. That's just sort of like an overview of...